ministry tonight with Gabriel Humphrey. He's going to begin the affair with his memory verse starting. First Corinthians 10, 21. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. Okay, what is the main teaching or meaning of that verse in your own words? That God wants us to be separated from idols and worldly things and to worship and to fellowship with him. Very good. What are other verses that help you to understand that verse? 2 Corinthians 6, 15 and 16, Deuteronomy 32, 38, and Matthew 6, 24. Good. What are some things this verse, good job on your memory work, by the way. What are some things this verse teaches you about God? That God wants us to worship him directly rather than idols. Good. What sins do this verse reprove? Um, idolatry, temptation, and false religion. Okay. What are some things this verse teaches you about yourself and your daily life? Before I got saved, I was set on things of the world, such as lust, lying, dark magic, sneaking, and false believing on salvation. But then as I commune with God, I know now that I can't do none of those things, none of those worldly things, and that you can't, and when you get saved, salvation is permanent. Okay, and do you have any other lessons from that verse? That God wants us to worship him uh, rather than idols and to be separated and to fellowship him with him. Therefore, Paul said, we cannot mix the things of the world with the things of God. Okay, and were you able to say your memory verse to a partner? Yes, my mother and my father. Good. You did a great job with the verse this week. There is one clear teaching about the verse that you missed, and I will see if our next random candidate can pick it out or did pick it out. And if not, we'll, we'll go over it after that. Sabrina, you ready? She needs the microphone. And the rest of you members don't get too comfortable. We might just do this all night okay. instead of having a sermon. Just go around every member and see okay. what you have. <laughs> okay, Sabrina, you can start with your memory verse. Okay. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 21. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Um, Perfect. First Corinthians 10, 21. Great, what is the main meaning of this verse in your own words? Okay. That God is a jealous God and that I must serve him alone as my, as my God. So God will not allow anyone or anything else to receive the honor that he deserves. I'm sorry, I'm nervous. Good, that's good. What are other verses, cross-references, that help you to understand this verse? Matthew 6, 24, Deuteronomy 32, 37, 38, 1 King 18, 21, Isaiah 65, 11. Good, what are some things this verse teaches you about God? That God will serve sinful humans by sacrificing his own son to pay for my sins. Okay. And what sins do this verse reprove? Pride, temptation, and idolatry. Okay. What are some things this verse teaches me about myself and my daily life? To stay away from the things of the world and separate myself completely and build my works on a foundation of Christ because works are based in valuable and precious things like, what, like wisdom and truth. And I will always need God's divine help in my life. Okay, and any other lessons from that verse? Uh, yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> <sighs> to 
to get up every day from my bed and start my day with the Lord Jesus Christ and not with the world that will make me lukewarm with the Lord Jesus Christ that will cause my life a disaster. Okay, good. Those were both excellent studies. Um, neither candidate tonight nailed the context of what Paul was talking about, although all applications were good. But in context, Paul is talking specifically about something. What's he talking about? Raise your hand if you know uh, Tamara. Communion, communion, the Lord's table, that you can't participate in heathenism or we, we would say worldliness and come to the communion table as well. Uh, the two don't mix. So that, that's the exact context. Both did a fine job with their study and application. I would say otherwise, if you didn't, good job. But don't forget, remember the, remember the context. In the context, Paul is addressing people who want to take communion and serve the devil too. That's and he's saying you you can't do both. All right. All right. Let's stand up this evening. We're going to sing hymn three forty nine. A new name in glory. A new name in glory. There is joy in the presence of angels over one sinner that repenteth. Luke fifteen ten. New name in glory. Sing it out this evening.
standing as we open up in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we just pray that uh, you just be uh, lifted up in the service tonight. Pray that you help us, Lord, to just uh, be attentive, Lord. Open up our ears, Lord, and our hearts to what um, you have in store for us through the preaching of your word tonight. Lord, we thank you for those who came back, Lord, to hear some more from your word. Because, Lord, this whole day is to um, worship you. And so, Lord, I pray that you bless it. I pray that you um, would just do a work um, as we're going through Nehemiah. I pray that you help us to learn. Uh, thank you, Lord, uh, for the blessings you've given us, Lord. And thank you for being um, the God of wonders that you are. Um, I pray that we continue, Lord, um, to lean on you and trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Turn over in your hymn books. Back a few pages. 292. Nothing between. 292. Nothing between my soul and the Savior.
right at this time, kids, you may bring up your missionary dollars. a candidate for church membership tonight, so we need to take a vote, and the candidate is uh, Curtis Arnold. Curtis Arnold. Uh, to give you a little bit of background, uh, before he started coming to Cornerstone, he had lost uh, everything. Um, he had lost his longtime job, he had lost his car, his apartment, and he came to meet with me thinking I'd have a quick answer, and um, I introduced him to the Seekers Bible study, and to make a long story short, he came every week as we went through that evangelistic program and received Jesus Christ as his Savior at the end. And uh, that's been about two years, two years. Uh, this isn't something that he's, um, a decision that he's made lightly, but he feels that the Lord would have him to be a member of Cornerstone Baptist Church. Of course, he was baptized here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and he's presenting himself uh, to our membership for membership. And so I need a member uh, that would um, <laughs> accept his request to be admitted as a member. That is Jerry Humphrey. And then another member to second that, Alex Young. All in favor? All opposed. <laughs> so we we had a couple of pose but I got them so <laughs> welcome to cornerstone as a church member Amen. praise the lord all right i'm going to go through announcements as we prepare to take up our offering tonight men's accountability meeting will be right after the service is over in our normal spot uh, that'll be tonight right after the preaching. If you have a cell phone, please double check, power it off to make sure that it won't be a distraction when we get into the word of God. Of course, we're praying and working and thinking towards our anniversary Sunday. Our 16th anniversary Sunday is coming in two weeks. Hard to believe it's come so quickly. We went through Bible conference and it was like, shoo, and then anniversary Sunday. And so we hit the ground running with what we've learned, and we still have two weeks left to get out, to uh, invite, and to really stir it up, and to bring souls in to hear the gospel on our 16th anniversary. 
If you have visitors that have committed, make sure you fill out a brick, leave it in the tray so that we can build the wall um, in our hallway. Um, also, VBS is coming up, and I was reminded today about t-shirts. We'd like to do a pre-order for VBS t-shirts. We get a better deal if we order them now. So if you are helping with Vacation Bible School and you would like a t-shirt, uh, you can order, you can pay for that through the bookstore for $8.99 or $0.95. $8.99, you can get your t-shirt and it'll be more expensive if we wait. And so if you want to get the $8.99 t-shirt for VBS, please um, stop by the bookstore, take care of it, and then we'll place an order. Ushers, if you'll come, we'll have a brief anniversary Sunday meeting right after the preaching. Brother Murray, if you would come and ask the Lord's blessing on our gift. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for bringing us here this evening. Lord, we thank you for um, just sending your word down to us, Lord, and Lord, just listening to the testimony of Brother Curtis and, and hearing, Lord, that he came to salvation, Lord, expecting something else, Lord, and what profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his own soul, Lord, he lost it all that he thought, but he gained something, Lord, and we thank you for it, and at the end of the day, all that's vanity, Lord, and we know it. We know that loving you, Lord, is a purpose and in keeping your commandments. And uh, he wouldn't be able to hear these things, Lord, if it wasn't a preacher, Lord, that, that gave it to him or your word. So we thank you for it. Lord, so how can we not give? How can we not give, Lord, when we hear testimonies like that? Lord, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to give. So, Lord, I pray our hearts be soft and open to give and be cheerful. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you could use the tithes and offering, uh, use it in a way that only you could, Lord and stretch it and, and spread it, Lord, and spread your word in different places. So, Lord, again, we just thank you for everything you've done. Lord, thank you, Lord, for your mercy and grace. And, Lord, I pray that you just continue to bless in all these things I ask in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, let's stand as we sing our last congregational hymn. It's going to be 362, No One Ever Cared For Me Like Jesus. Hymn 362, stand as we sing our last congregational hymn this evening. I 
would tell you how he changed my life completely. He did something that no other friend could do. No one ever did for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from may be seated. And when you find Nehemiah chapter 9, let's stand this evening for the reading of the Word of God. 
Tonight I want to bring a message entitled, But After They Had Rest. But After They Had Rest. Nehemiah chapter 9. In our series on the book of Nehemiah. To give you the immediate context, we've learned through this chapter that God is a God of wonders. And then through this prayer, we see a rebellious people being shown God's glory and turning away from his goodness to them. They're coming back to him as God gives them more light and more judges or saviors, the, the word is. And so they sin, they backslide, they come back to God. God hears them. He grants them forgiveness. He blesses them again. Cycle of sin. This prayer is recounting that whole cycle of sin in the book of Judges. I'd ask that you remember that the chapter is a prayer, largely a prayer. It is the largest the longest recorded prayer in the scriptures. We're going to read verses 28 through 38, and we'd like to read it responsively tonight. And so I'll read verse 28, and then we'll alternate until we get to the end of the chapter. Nehemiah chapter 9, beginning in verse number 28. Let's do our best as we read responsively to stay together, not a race. The goal is to stay together. And let's read it with some enthusiasm tonight. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse number 28. But after they had rest, they did evil again before thee. Therefore leftest thou them in the hand of their enemies, so that they had the dominion over them. Yet when they returned and cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven, and many times didst thou deliver them according to thy mercies. Yet many years didst thou forbear them, testifiest against them by thy spirit and thy prophets. Yet would they not give ear. Therefore gavest thou them into the hand of the people of the lands. Now therefore... Our God, the great, the mighty, and the terrible God, who keepeth covenant and mercy, let not all the trouble seem little before thee, that thou hast come upon that hath come upon us, on our kings, on our princes, and on our priests, and on our prophets, and on our fathers, and on all thy people since the time of the kings of Assyria unto this day. Neither have our kings, our princes, our priests, nor our fathers kept thy law, nor hearkened unto thy commandments and thy testimonies, wherewith thou didst testify against them. Behold, we are servants this day, and for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof, behold, we are servants in it. Amen. 
And because of all this, we make a sure covenant and write it. And our princes, Levites, and priests seal unto it. I want to draw your attention to verse number 28. Look back up there with me. Do you see these words? But after they had rest, they did evil again before thee. After they had rest, they did evil. The easiest time to get yourself in trouble spiritually is after God has given you a measure of rest. The devil has backed off. Just like in Christ's temptation when the Bible says, then the devil leaveth him. The blessings are flowing. Things are going better at home. The marriage has been restored. The kids are responding to discipline. The bills are being paid. The washing machine is not broken. The car engine turns over. The doctor said, don't worry, it's not cancer. And God has given you some rest. Praise the Lord for that, but don't you dare get comfortable because of the warning of our text, verse number 28. But after they had rest, they did evil again before thee. Let's pray. Father, would you help in this service? Would you give me words, Lord, and I pray that I would preach your word in your strength and in your power. I do pray for the filling of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you'll be with every listener that your name would be glorified and that your word would be handled with integrity and that you would work and move our hearts by your word this evening. And Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. The prayer we started this morning continues. Again, this is the longest prayer in the Bible. And embedded in this prayer is a warning of what can happen after our blessings. I look out tonight, this evening, and I see people that God has blessed. And my warning to you is beware. Beware. After our blessings, our resistance is down. Did you get that? After our blessings... It's easy to be caught off guard. After our blessings, we let our guard down. And it's easy for the devil to get in and work. <clears throat> in a real sense, I get scared when I see God really, really blessing someone. Because I know that that's a very spiritually vulnerable time. Our text tells us that these are the things that happen when we use our rest as an opportunity to relax and relapse into sin. Number one, falling after your rest puts you right back into the hand of your enemies. Falling after your rest puts you right back into the hand of your enemies. Look at verse number 28. But after they had rest, they did evil again before thee. Therefore left this thou them in the hand of their what? Enemies. So that they had the dominion over them. You fall after your rest and you go right back into the hand of many times the same enemy. I want you to imagine what you would feel like if you realized your child had been kidnapped. It's hard to do, isn't it? Your child is kidnapped. I, I think I'd just go crazy. I, I think I'd, I, don't, I don't know what I'd do. But your child's been kidnapped, and by God's grace, you get your child back. And that child's kidnapped again. What are the odds? You say, what are the odds of that? And they're kidnapped again by the same enemy. Wouldn't that get old? Shouldn't it get old that we're spiritually kidnapped by the same enemy over and over and over again? 
Falling after our rest puts us right back into the hand of the enemy, re-kidnapped. Number two, falling after rest is a sign of pride. I'm thankful for rest. But when you fall after rest, you say, what's the root cause of falling right back? Pride, verse number 29, and testify us against them that thou mightest bring them again unto thy law, yet they dealt how? Proudly, proudly, and hearken not unto thy commandments, but sinned against thy judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them, and withdrew the shoulder, withdrew the shoulder. Now, now imagine that. Someone goes, I go after church to put my hand on Alex's shoulder just to encourage him, and he does this. I've heard of people doing that. Can you imagine that? I've heard of people doing that to their best friend. The person that was one time their best friend. Treating God like that out of pride. Hardened their neck and would not hear. The obvious temptation in context is that we are lifted up in some way thinking that we have provided that rest. That somehow that rest or that blessing came through the devices of our own mind. How many have the experience of feeling more well-rested after getting a new mattress. Okay, you get a new mattress, you sleep on that thing for one night, you go, whoa, whoa. And you get up feeling like you really did something. When in reality, you didn't do anything. You had nothing to do with it. When God gives us rest, please remember we had nothing, nothing to do with it. He becomes that, and I don't say this irreverently, he becomes that, that, that mattress, that place of rest. We had nothing to do with the sweet rest that was given to us. And so we shouldn't take any credit for it. Number three, falling after arrest is resisting the Holy Ghost. Falling after arrest is a resisting of the Holy Ghost. Look at verse number 30. Yet after many years didst thou forbear them, Testify us against them by thy spirit in thy prophets. Yet would not they give ear. Man, through his prophets, the Holy Spirit was trying to minister to his people. One of the craziest things I saw was that it was a video circulating of a man that was in court and he went after the judge. How many remember seeing that video? I mean, he, he supermaned over the desk and he got a hold of that judge resisting the arrest. How oftentimes do we resist the arrest of the Holy Spirit when he's trying to restrain us and keep us back? And we do that oftentimes after arrest. Number four, falling after arrest, praise the Lord, doesn't have to be final. Look at verse number 31. Nevertheless, for thy great mercy's sake, thou didst not utterly consume them, nor forsake them. For thou art a gracious and merciful God. Aren't you glad that falling after a rest, although it's not good, doesn't have to be final? I think of David, who was blessed of God mightily. Talk about a rest. And yet he failed, he, he fell into sin, but he sought God's forgiveness. Right. I'm also thankful for a son of David who has never fallen, Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ. And that son of David provides an eternal rest for the souls of those who come to God by him. You don't have to go to hell. Right. There's an eternal rest. Number five, falling after the rest often makes your problems worse than they were before. Verse number 32. Now therefore our God, the great, the mighty, and the terrible God, who keepeth covenant and mercy, let not all the trouble seem little before thee that hath come upon us, on our kings, and on our princes, and on our priests, and on our prophets, and on our fathers, it's like an endless list there, and on all thy people since the time of the kings of Assyria unto this day. Now, what, what was the condition of the children of Israel at the, at the, in the story of Nehemiah? 
they were under bondage to the, the, the Persian Empire. Okay? They had built the wall, but they were still subjected to the Persians. Their situation didn't get better as they fell away from God. Now think about that. God blesses you. He provides a rest. And you say, well, I'm just going to take this as my opportunity to get back into sin a little bit more. No, no. God tells you your situation can be worse the next time around. Number six, falling after rest is no excuse to blame God. No excuse to blame God. Verse number 33. Howbeit thou art just in all that is brought upon us. God, we deserve this. For thou hast done right, but we have done wickedly. Adam tried to do this when God found him out. He said, God, it was the woman that thou gavest me. Trying to blame God. When we fall after arrest, we can't point up to God and say, God, somehow you got me into this situation. Right. He's just. Whatever he does is right. Number seven, falling after rest is a special trap for leadership. Okay? If you serve in a leadership capacity in our church, you better listen up. It is a special trap for leadership. Look at verse 34. Neither have our kings, our princes, who are these, the leaders, our priests, nor our fathers kept thy law. Pray for your spiritual leaders. Pray for them. I guarantee you the devil is determined to drag them down. And if our Samson's are drugged down, so will our Israel's be drugged down. The devil wants your spiritual leaders. He starts there. Why does he start there? Why does he start with the spiritual leaders? If the devil can get the spiritual leaders, the rest of the sheep will be easy prey. Pray for your leaders. I'm begging you. Pray for your spiritual leaders. I depend on your prayers. Can't say that emphatically enough. Number eight, falling after rest is a rejection of God's goodness. Look at verse 33. For they have not served thee in their kingdom and in thy great goodness that thou gavest them. God's goodness. And in the large and fat land which thou gavest before them, neither turned they from their wicked works. When our children sin against us how many of us parents remember trying to remind our children how good we've tried to be to them i know i have man i pull out that card you may say that's not fair i pull out that card man you disobey me and treat me this way i've tried to do this and this and this for you haven't we viewed their failure as a rejection of the goodness that we've tried to bestow upon them? God's no different. He says, I've been good to you. Don't spit in my face. Don't spit in my face. Number nine, falling after rest makes you look like a slave. It makes you look like a slave. And, I, and I know, nobody in this room is going to be for slavery, but let me tell you something. You fall after a rest and you're setting yourself up for slavery. Look at verse 36. Behold, we are servants this day. <laughs> and they were. Who were they servants to? The Persian king who let Nehemiah go rebuild the wall. We're, we're servants this day. We're slaves. Verse 36, and for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof, behold, we are servants in it. By the way, God told them this would happen. God said, you fall away from me and you'll become slaves. Now listen, if you're saved tonight, Romans tells us that you're no longer a servant of sin. You're no longer under slavery. You've been released. I want you to imagine, how many of you know somebody that's been in jail? 
Almost every hand went up. <laughs> no, somebody that's been in jail. They get released from jail. What do they look like showing up the next day saying, put me back in the cell? Huh? What do they look like? A fool. I guarantee whoever you're thinking of didn't do that. But why is it that we do it? Put me back in the cell. Falling after our rest makes us look like a slave. Number 10, falling after rest enriches the enemy. It enriches the enemy. Look at verse 37. And it yieldeth much increase unto the kings. What yields increase to the kings? Look at the context. Come on now, wake up. You with me? What yields much increase unto the kings? The land that God gave his people. It yieldeth much increase unto the kings. They're getting fat off of God's land, the land that he gave to his people. The Bible says, whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. Also, they have dominion over our bodies and over our cattle at their pleasure. We are in great distress. Falling after rest enriches the enemy. How interested are you in the enemy being enriched by your things? Those of you that own a home. If you went home after church tonight and Lori Lightfoot was sitting in your living room and said, this is my house now, I live here, what would you do? What would you think? She's sitting in your living room. She said, this is my house. And, and listen, what if by some slant of the law, she was right and she could keep your house and your car and you had to watch her driving around town in your car? What's the point? I don't want to see the enemies of God enjoying my blessings. You divorce and some other guy's living in your house. You follow me? I don't want to see the enemies enjoying the blessings that God intended for me to enjoy. Israel said, our land is yielding much increase to the king's. But we're not beneficiaries of it. Now the last verse in the chapter speaks of having a new beginning. Look at verse 38. And because of all this, we make a sure covenant. Because of all this. All what? The whole prayer you heard today if you've been in church. Because of all this, we make a sure covenant and write it. And our princes, Levites, and priests seal unto it. What's verse 38 about? Making a new decision having a new focus, and writing some things down. How it's going to be different, making it public. And above all, being very, very, very careful after God's given you some rest. God's given you some rest, we naturally want to relax. No, no, that's the time you need to be on guard. Father, thank you for your word this evening. Pray that you'll help us to step out and make that new beginning with you if necessary. Lord, that we would not use your rest as an opportunity to indulge. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand to your feet with your heads bowed, eyes closed. As I listen to the testimony.